Greetings, amazing students. All right. So we are, so last class we took our unit seven exam. This class, we're on to unit eight and we're still on quadratics, okay? So we are still doing quadratic equations um, and just going more in depth. So if you're, well, you are taking notes, especially on this one, because now we're getting more into stuff that you, vocabulary, um, different variables, what they mean. So at this point in class, you've been introduced to quite a lot of different things. Um, all of these things, all these bullet points you have been introduced to, um, you may not be proficient in all of them. Um, but we're going to be practicing them and getting more in depth with quadratics. But look at this. this is, look at look at this. If you showed somebody this, it would be like, wait, what are all these letters? So what are we doing today? We are looking at the vertex form equation and breaking down the difference between y equals x squared, which is the parent function, right? We compare all quadratics to this function versus y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Each of these letters have a different function in terms of what it does. All these letters transform the quadratic equation from its parent equation. So remember, y equals x squared, if I was to graph that, I know it would look something like this, where the origin is the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the vertex, the minimum, and the axis of symmetry, and the domain is x is all real numbers, the range is everything greater than or equal to zero. But what we're going to notice is that if I change one part of this equation, my graph might translate to the right, it might flip over and get skinnier. There's just so many different things that can happen just based on each letter. Okay, so this is what I mean. You definitely have to take notes because each letter is going to mean a different thing. So here again is the parent function. And we discussed in the last slide that 0, 0 is the x-intercept, the y-intercept, the vertex, the minimum, the axis of symmetry, all that great amazing stuff. And how, when we change the equation, does it affect the parent function? So here's a quick snapshot of what happens and what each letter means in vertex form. So any addition, subtraction, multiplication, division to the parent function changes the appearance of the parent function. So the A value tells us how narrow or wide our quadratic, our parabola looks. It also tells us if it's concave up or concave down. Our H value tells us which direction it's moving, left or right. And our K value tells us whether the parabola will move up or down. So if you want a quick snapshot, here's the basics of what each letter does. Now let's go more in depth. So here is A. We're going to start with the letter A. A tells us four different things. If the A value is positive, if the A value is positive, it means that our graph opens up or it is concave up or smiley face. And you learned this last class, or no, I mean a couple of class periods ago, about the A value. I mentioned it very quickly. And remember, please pause the video. Please make sure you're writing all this down. Don't kind of like sometimes in class where I'm talking about a certain thing, but you're still writing all these down. Don't worry, I'm going to go through each bullet point, and I need you to make sure you're understanding each one. If my A value is negative, if it is negative, I know my parabola will be facing down or concave down or sad face, frowny face. So this will tell me which direction or how my graph is opening up. This will be called a reflection 
across the x-axis. This will be called a reflection across the x-axis. And this is because if I drew my parent function, y equals x squared, what is the a value? The a value is positive 1. But if I drew and the function y equals negative x squared, what happened? It's a just it just flipped over, right? It's a reflection across the x-axis. It flipped over the x-axis. Okay, so that's why it will be called a reflection across the x-axis. If my a value, negative or positive, if the number itself is greater than 1, if the number itself is greater than 1, then my graph is said to have a vertical stretch, meaning it gets narrower. So it's going to look narrower. So if I was to graph it over here, it might be something like this. And this is y equals like 3x squared or something. Okay. It will be narrower than the parent function. And if my graph, and sorry if you can't see the pen, is between 0 and 1, positive or negative, the, this, these are absolute value brackets, it's going to say you have a vertical compression or the graph will get wider. So let's say I had something looking like this. This would be like y equals, and I'm literally just guessing numbers here, one-third x squared, negative one-third x squared. Had to be negative because it's facing down, right? But this one-third, this number itself is between zero and one, this a value. Therefore, it is a vertical compression. It gets wider. You can think of it like I'm squishing something. Like if I had some Play-Doh in my hand and I squished it between my hands, it will get wider. Right? But if I took the Play-Doh and I stretched it out, and I wish you could see with my hands and what I was doing, um, it would get narrower. So here's an actual graph. The red line is my parent function y equals, oops, sorry, y equals x squared. And the blue line is a transformation, y equals 2x squared. What do you notice? What do you notice about the equations? What's the difference in the equations? And what do you notice about the graph and how it looks? Take a moment to pause the video and kind of think of your observations. So what you should notice is that the a value here is 1, but the a value here is 2. So this, since this a value here is greater than 1, it's a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch. It gets narrower. Right? Again, if I'm stretching Play-Doh up and down, my Play-Doh will get narrower. And that's why it's narrower, skinnier, than the red line, which is our parent function. Let's look here. We have y equals x squared is in the red line. And then the blue line or the purple line is y equals one-third x squared. What is this a value? This a value is between 0 and 1, meaning this is a vertical compression. Again, if I had Play-Doh in my hand and I compressed it, it would stretch out on the sides or get it would get wider. Okay, so this is why this blue line is outside the red line. Okay, it's a vertical compression. It got wider. And then, what do you notice about these two different lines? One is concave up, one is concave down. This red line is y equals x squared. This black line is y equals negative x squared. Well, the a value here is negative. And the a value here is positive. So this is facing up, facing down. Reflection across the x-axis. Okay, that's our a value and what that means, okay? 
Um, here is just all four graphs that we just did. And when our A values change, it's the same y except the y intercept didn't change, it all stayed on the zero. Um, but it either got narrower or wider, or it's facing up or down. Let's talk about the H value. Our H value tells us which direction it's moving, either left or right. Now, X minus H. If you think back to when we were doing linear equations with Y minus Y, Y1 equals M times X minus X1, point slope form, a lot of people got confused because of the opposite sign. But remember, this is my equation. So when I plug in an H value, if the H value is positive, this sign doesn't change. So when it says X minus H, this is actually me plugging in a positive H value. And this tells me it's moving to the right. So even though it says X minus H, I'm plugging in a positive H value. Therefore, it's moving to the right. If it says X plus H, that means I had to have plugged in a negative H value to make this minus sign turn into a plus sign. So if it says X plus H, I know I turn, plugged in a negative H value, meaning that my graph is going to move to the left. So here you have to think opposite. Okay, so X minus H is moving to the right, but I plugged in a positive H value. X plus H moves to the left, but I plugged in a negative H value. That's why it's moving to the left. So let's look at these two different lines. And I want you to notice here, this red line is Y equals X squared, and it has an X intercept at zero, zero, right? X and Y intercept. This blue line moved to the right three times. So if it moved to the right, I know that my H value would be X minus H. So the equation to this blue line is Y equals X minus three squared, because it moved to the right three. While my green line, one, two, three, is at negative three zero. Well, this negative three telling me it moved to the left three tells me my equations y equals x plus h squared. Oh, sorry, x plus three squared. Because I moved to the left, right? And if I plugged in, And I want to make sure everyone sees this, right? This negative three, zero, we haven't learned it yet. I'm doing transformations a little bit out of order this year compared to other years. But our vertex is HK. So if I plugged in that negative three to the H value, if I plugged in that negative three into the H value, that minus negative is y is going to be x plus 3 squared. And here, if I plugged in a positive 3 into my h value, it's going to be x minus 3. All right, let's move on to the k value. The k value tells us if I move up or down, a plus k means I moved up, my graph moved up, and a minus k means I moved down. So no opposites here. Plus k up, minus k down. So if you notice this green line moved up 3 from the parent function, right? The red line is y equals x squared. It moved up 3, so I know this is going to be a positive k value. And the k value would be 3. So y equals x squared plus 3. And this blue line moved down 3 from the parent function. So you know that the k value is going to be negative. It will be negative 3, hence the minus 3. So we have to put all that together. And we're going to, so the transformation is like, oh, this isn't too bad. Well, we're going to put all that together.
Okay, so how's that gonna, when I have a compression, a flip, a reflection across the x-axis, moving to the left, going up, all of that together is when it gets a little bit more complicated. So let's look at some examples. So I want to write an equation. If I had a stretch of two units, let's pause. What is a stretch? Which letter represents stretch? Anytime you have a transformation, I would pause and make sure you write out, okay, this is either a stretch or a compression. My A value is either a stretch or a compression. And it either is facing up or down. My H value is either moving left or right. And my K value is either moving up or down. So if I'm stretching two units, I know a stretch is talking about the A value. So that tells me my A value is 2. Reflection across the x-axis, that tells me that it's facing down. So I know my A value must be negative. So putting all that together, the only thing that was affected was the A value. The H and K was not affected, so those are just zero. So if I know my A is negative and it has to be 2, my equation would be Y equals negative 2X squared. Let's look at another one. If I stretch three units, pause, a stretch is which letter? A. So I know my A is 3, and it may move three units to the left. Left, that's my H value. And if I know I move to the left, it's going to be X plus H. Right, think opposite. Then I know my equation. I'm always going to write out my vertex form equation. Then I know my equation is going to be Y equals 3 x plus 3 squared, and there is no plus anything because it didn't move up or down, so that's not what was affected, so the k value is 0. But that tells me it stretched 3 and that it went to the left 3 because of x plus 3. All right, let's try another one. If I compress, compress, what letter is that? A, 0.5 units. A would be 0.5. And I move to the right, I know that's my h value. And if I'm going to the right, I know that's x minus h, 2 units, so h is going to be 2. And I go up 3, so I know my k value is going to be positive. And I go up 3, I know all these things. So before I start writing my equation, I need to have all of these things annotated. So y equals a x minus h squared plus k, y equals 0.5, x, and this is to the right, so minus 2 squared, up 3, so plus 3. So this time I have my a value plugged in, my h value plugged in, and my k value plugged in. So, I wish I could write on this slide. So, for today's assignment, I believe it's a Desmos activity and it's a Canvas quiz. Take your time through that Desmos activity because it will help break down each letter and help you practice before you take that Canvas quiz. Um, if you need more help, you can always go see Mr. Park or you can YouTube some videos about quadratic transformations. Have a great day.